Come here, come here, come here. I've been called obsessed with this by a lot of people. I don't usually talk stocks around the apartment because it drives my girlfriend crazy. I especially don't talk Tesla. And by the way, it's not, it's not ruling my life. I mean, I don't think about it while I'm out to dinner or while I'm sleeping or whatever. Um, but none of us can believe what's so obvious and out there in plain sight is, is being improperly priced by the markets. I have tremendous amount of fans in like the real world. Like when I go out in LA and you know, you, people start talking about Tesla or my reputation with Tesla. I mean, I'm getting clients because of this. Um, I'm going up to San Francisco. This whole Tesla club wants to meet me. Tesla fans are rabid fans and they're, they love me be, for sticking up for Tesla. Tesla is perhaps the most polarizing company in stock market history. Where some see brilliant disruption, others find blatant fraud. This is a story about innovation, belief, money, lies. I love Tesla. Thank you, Elon Musk. Tesla is a fraud. What I love Tesla new? Auto. The I'm weed is finally yeah, 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 And a Tesla. And a whole lot of noise. There is no comparing any company to Tesla. It's a Wall Street debt story. It's a page six story. It is a Silicon Valley story. It is an American dream story. And it is a mess. Tesla is disrupting the existing world order. And uh, the traditional, the old guard, does not like that. Very truly, I, I am offended by the dishonesty of Elon Musk. I'm biased. I'm biased to a guy who's made me millions of dollars. Every day, there's like a new, you know, scammy thing that comes out about this company. Some people on Wall Street love it. And some people see uh, a dishonest company that's going off the rails. In Tesla, the bulls see a truly innovative brand, upending the status quo of the auto industry and ushering in a sustainable age of travel that frees us from fossil fuels and brings us closer to the ubiquity of AI. At the helm, they see a genius and a visionary pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible. A billionaire celebrity CEO for the modern age. Me? I think the whole thing is a gigantic fraud and it's going to end up hitting the wall and likely taking the market down with it. I've spent 35 years working in financial markets in seven countries all around the globe. I've seen every boom, bust and bubble since the mid-1980s, but I've never seen anything like Tesla. And I'm not alone. Number one, um, it has nothing meaningfully proprietary in terms of technology. Number two, it loses a lot of money. It's lost all this money before the real competition has come in. Mark Spiegel is one of the poster boys of an online community of Tesla skeptics who've been dubbed Tesla Q. Tesla Q are a bunch of guys who found each other on Twitter who all came to be short this stock, Tesla. Short sellers bet against stocks, borrowing shares and then selling them in order to profit if the price goes down. If they're wrong, short sellers expose themselves to unlimited losses, so they need to have a high degree of confidence in their thesis. When a stock enters bankruptcy, it gets a queue attached to the end of the ticker. And so we've kind of thought that was a a clever way of referring to Tesla because that's where we think it's headed. Tesla Q has grown organically through social media, attracting experts from all kinds of different fields, many of them outside finance. Why are we out doing practical research? Because we can't get the truth about this company. Lying is like breathing for this company. They've done it for so long, they don't know the difference. Many Tesla Q members prefer to stay anonymous for fear of retribution from Elon Musk. And they have good reason. Musk has attacked critics before. I've searched for reasonable, quantifiable, bullish arguments to support the value of Tesla equity exhaustively. And I have not found one. and the lack of it over time um, only hardens one's views. I have never shorted a stock in my life in any way except Tesla. It 
States, stock is stratospherically valued relative to fundamentals. The company is valued at over $50 billion, putting it among the top seven auto manufacturers in the world. There's just one problem. When you have a celebrity CEO and $50 billion in market cap, a lot of things can happen for free. Um, but it, Tesla never was really profitable. While industry stalwarts record massive profits every single year, the only time Tesla has reported consecutive net income in its 16 years of existence was during the last two quarters of 2018. Tesla loses money and regularly makes headlines for all the wrong reasons. Breaking news on Tesla, it is cutting about 9% of its workforce. Tesla is now facing a criminal investigation over statements made by their CEOs, Elon Musk. Even good news for Tesla comes with a caveat. The announcement of a much-delayed $35,000 Model 3 was supposed to be a milestone, but it came with layoffs and a shift to online sales only. A week later, the company walked back its plan for store closures, perhaps not realizing leases can't be reneged upon unless a company is in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. For any ordinary company, the kind of bad press which has cascaded down on Tesla in recent months would be fatal. Tesla, however, is anything but ordinary. If Tesla went bankrupt, the stock would probably go up that day. I think Tesla is hilariously overpriced. You'll find other people who think Tesla is undervalued at $300 a share. Some people think it's worth 4,000 bucks. The passion felt by the bears is counterbalanced by an unswerving faith in Elon Musk from the bulls. I have no concerns about Tesla's viability. Tesla is delighting the consumer. Uh, this is a replay of Amazon. I lived through Amazon through its ups and downs, years where they weren't earning money and questions about viability, meaning the, the traditional retailers were gonna kill Amazon. Uh, if, if you were looking through the lens of disruptive innovation, you knew that wasn't true. You just push this button here, my opinion of Tesla is well documented, but I wanted to give one of the company's most yeah. ardent supporters oh, the chance right to change into, my uh, mind. My front door. It's pretty cool. My kids love it. And that included the autopilot function. So I'll switch it on now. So it's on. Okay. And I'm done. Right. Feet come up. I don't, you know, I don't need to do anything. I can play on my phone. I can do whatever I want. So this could be one of the more challenging intersections in LA, the 405 and the 10, and, and you see people keep cutting me off. Do I look nervous? Do I look like I am even need to grab the steering wheel? No, because you know the truth of the matter is right now the car sees it. No, nobody's done anything dumb enough that I need to take right. yeah, yeah. This is a car that has a great handling, great car, but technology that nobody's even come close to even touch. It's the iPhone of cars. And maybe you wanna you know, listen to some music. You can switch between music channels, um, podcasts, whatever. There's the charging screen, so it shows your battery level. You know, we could debate this all night, but in 10 years, everybody's gonna have a car that looks like this. It might not be made by Tesla, but they'll all be like this. The competition is well on its way. The Jaguar I-Pace has debuted to rave reviews. Porsche is promoting its Taycan and plans to make half its vehicles electric or hybrid by 2025. Audi's e-tron will be on the market by the second quarter of 2019. Mercedes, BMW, Volvo, every luxury car brand will be introducing fleets of electric vehicles. But the key to Tesla's future is to be able to deliver mass market, affordable luxury. It's faster than almost every car on the road, which is pretty funny, you know, for a $45,000 car. Um, it looks great. Uh, and that's something a lot of people don't value. They don't understand. Oh, the i3 or oh, this or that. I don't want to be seen in, in a vault. I'm not getting in a vault for anything, okay? Tesla has 80% share of the electric vehicle market in the United States. It's in the top five selling of all cars, gas powered or electric. The consumer is speaking very loudly here. Tesla's Model 3 was one of the best selling luxury vehicles in 2018. But the road to making it 
encapsulated everything the bears say is wrong with Tesla. Its big reveal was in 2016, and despite some creative marketing from Musk, the Model 3 landed about $10,000 above his promised price. According to Musk himself, selling a $35,000 version would be fatal to the company. Along the way, hundreds of thousands of people signed up for the waitlist, each forking over a $1,000 deposit, while Tesla experienced massive production delays. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to production hell. They were even forced to build a giant tent the size of two football fields at their factory in Fremont, California, to use as a third production line, raising questions on quality for Tesla Q. The tent was my aha moment. Yeah, that was the moment when I realized we were not dealing with a serious company. We were dealing with a desperate individual uh, who had set performance metrics that he couldn't meet and was now in a situation that he couldn't completely control. In February of 2019, the Model 3 finally reached its promised $35,000 price. However, praise from the critics had started to falter. Tesla shares falling almost 4% after Consumer Reports says it's no longer going to recommend the Model 3 due to reliability issues. Online, you'll find Tesla owners complaining about their cars not functioning in frigid temperatures, about fenders falling off, and serious battery degradation. Should be getting 120 kilowatts, only getting 31. But for every unhappy customer, there are Tesla consumers who are extremely vocal, almost evangelical, about how much they love their cars. Wow. He could get in that little space. I don't believe he can get in that little small space. He needs to get plenty space there. Oh, shucks now. How's your mouth to go slap somebody? You gotta buy me one of these, Will. The Model 3 has become a bit of an infatuation for Tesla Q, and the building of that tent was the catalyst for what's become known as the SAF, the Shorty Air Force, a way to try and verify Tesla's official production numbers. Folks were analyzing Apple Maps satellite photos and Google Earth satellite photos, and I watched them doing this, and I thought, wow, this stuff is really old. I mean, at the very best case, they were looking at aerial photographs or satellite photographs that were weeks old and possibly even months old. Machine Planet flies regular sorties over Tesla's Fremont facility to document the company's progress, or otherwise. Other members monitor parking lots all over the country, where it's reported that hundreds of seemingly brand new Teslas are mysteriously parked. There are 150 Model 3s sitting in this lot. To Tesla Q, this looks like a plot to hide what would be a dangerous lack of demand. Tesla Q can get a little out of hand. Uh, sometimes it assigns malicious intent to things that at Tesla could also just be incompetence. There is a gap between Model 3 deliveries and registrations. According to what former employees have told me, it does not have a good tracking system for its registration, and its delivery system is just wrong. But, uh, you know, it isn't necessarily because Tesla is, you know, trying to keep more cars on its balance sheet to borrow against. Tesla's press office is famously tight-lipped, which doesn't help dissipate speculation. And Musk himself has become notorious for making promises that have more often than not failed to become reality, especially when it comes to deadlines. Consequently, Tesla Q members are constantly on the prowl for every bit of Tesla news. They've launched a website, produce podcasts, talk to the media, and make very detailed charts. Lots and lots of charts. Their zeal to prove Elon Musk and his company are failing is impressive. They've got people tracking his private jet. You know, where's he going now? Where's he going now? And this is not a way to lead a healthy, balanced lifestyle, but it might be a way to get an edge on your big bet on Wall Street. I have never seen anything like Tesla Q in my seven years reporting about Wall Street. Tesla fanboys are vindicated by each new announcement from Elon Musk but Tesla Q are always there to provide a counter-argument. If Musk says Tesla will produce more cars, Tesla Q questions demand. When Musk tweets before a bond payment is due, the doubters see stock pumping. The unveiling of Tesla's newest Model Y is met with questions about where and how it will be made. The Model Y. Yeah. 
There's nothing. They don't have a factory to build the Model Y in. They don't have enough money to develop it or buy the equipment for it. They need billions of dollars right now. At some point, even the stupidest investors wake up and stop pouring money down a rat hole. Thank Tesla has $12 billion in debt, and Elon Musk has said multiple times that the company has been on the verge of bankruptcy, which leads us to another big Tesla Q fixation. Back in 2016, the company acquired SolarCity, which was helmed by Elon's cousin. At that time, the company was basically bankrupt. But Elon convinced his shareholders that if they bought the company in an all-stock deal, then it would turn Tesla into this, you know, conglomerate dedicated to renewable energy. Unfortunately, SolarCity also had $700 million in debt. The solar roof shingles that Elon showed off to sell people on the merger in 2016 still have not reached the market. And it's almost three years now. So now SolarCity's debt is Tesla's problem. Talk about an aha moment. If you weren't already suspicious of Musk before the SolarCity acquisition, that should have been all the evidence you needed that he will act in his own best interests and no one else's interests, because that was indefensibly uh, harmful to Tesla. I frankly think when the Tesla story is over, that will be the, the Waterloo for, for Elon Musk. Musk may be the driving force behind Tesla, but some also see him as its biggest liability. Brilliant, um, impulsive, um, reckless. Tweeting with abandon and some loose facts have landed Musk in hot water with regulators. In August 2018, he said he was taking the company private and had funding secured. It turned out he didn't. Today, the SEC filed securities fraud charges against Elon Musk, the chairman and CEO of Tesla Motors. He settled securities fraud charges and can't deny, you know, under the settlement, can't deny that he has committed securities fraud. Impulsiveness is not just uh, doing something rash in, in when you run a public company that can get you in real trouble. Neither celebrity status nor a reputation as a technological innovator provide an exemption from the federal securities laws. Tesla and Musk reached a settlement with the SEC, which required both parties to pay a $20 million fine. Musk was forced to step down as the company's chairman, and it was mandated that someone within the company approve any tweets about Tesla. But that, apparently, hasn't happened. Federal regulators want Tesla CEO Elon Musk held in contempt of court. They say he sent a tweet that violates a settlement restricting his public statements that could affect Tesla's stock's performance. Musk and the SEC are now engaged in a legal battle over free speech, executive accountability for misleading statements, and potential market manipulation. I, I think I've never seen so many cameras in my entire life. This is, <laughs> this is cameras everywhere. Elon Musk is, is the most untrustworthy, pathologically lying, large cap CEO I, I think I've ever seen. If Steve Jobs had had access to Twitter, I guarantee you, we would have been, you would have been asking the same questions. He declared thermonuclear war against Google when it released Android. And he said he was going to spend every single dollar of cash that Apple had to destroy Android. That would have been all over Twitter. Increasingly, however, calls for Musk to step aside are getting louder. How much longer can this go on before Musk is shunted to one side? This guy's going to attack the SEC? How about removing him? Elon Musk is a fake engineer and a fake scientist and a fake prophet and a fake visionary. He's our Thomas Edison. He's, he's brilliant. He's an innovator, an inventor. Um, a renaissance man in many ways. I mean, there's, I think that pe people can't relate to him because there are not many people like him. Elon Musk is reportedly worth over $21 billion, and he's been at the center of more than one globally recognized business. And liftoff. 
SpaceX is pushing the boundaries for private enterprise and space travel. And while Musk didn't found Tesla, he was the company's first big investor before becoming its CEO. And his other venture, The Boring Company, is testing underground tunnels in Los Angeles, which will, according to Musk, change the future of mass transportation. Musk has become a cultural icon, making cameos in Hollywood movies and being described as the real-life Iron Man. His marriages and dating life lead to headlines and red carpets. I've never covered a company whose CEO gets invited to the Met Metropolitan Gala. But Elon's there every year. If you ask the average American to name a business leader, they're going to be hard-pressed to come up with anyone besides Elon Musk. Some of the stories surrounding Musk have a decidedly salacious feel to them. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is the subject of a new controversy after he appeared to smoke marijuana during a podcast interview. Elon Musk firing legal muscle as he faces an SEC probe. He also went after that cave rescuer again, calling him a child rapist. He's kind of a wild and crazy guy. You know, I get that. I, I am too. I call us the Gen X leaders where Things like Twitter and social media are a part of our business. You know, many of my employees worry about my tweeting all the time. Um, you know, and my lawyers and, and my mom. Um, but we've grown a huge business this way because people know you're real. Musk commands a legion of nearly 25 million followers, many of them loyal supporters who defend him against any online criticism. He posts at all hours of the night and sometimes makes his attacks personal. He also lashes out at the press and suggested launching a website to rate the trustworthiness of reporters. He's accused me of taking bribes from short sellers who were betting against the company. He's accused me of making up my sources. Um, none of that is true. Lynette Lopez has done considerable reporting on Tesla, but one particular article made her a target. It focused on Tesla deciding to skip a critical test on the Model 3 in order to speed up production. When I published that, Tesla didn't deny it, but it simply said that it had different ways of checking the brakes and, you know, kind of mind your own business. A couple days later, uh, Elon Musk starts going off about how, you know, I'm paid by short sellers and I also, you know, lie about the information that I'm getting. And, you know, he started going through my Facebook profile, or at least as he put it, um, people were sending him things about me, so he was just posting it on the internet when he has millions and millions of followers who just believe anything he says. It just results in you being attacked. Musk also uses the press to whip up anger towards short sellers, accusing them of desperately pushing a narrative that will possibly result in Tesla's destruction and calling them jerks who want us to die. Montana Skeptic says Musk crossed the online barrier and threatened him in real life. I became a target of people who wanted to dox me and find out my identity. They were so offended at the things I was writing about Tesla, like how the 10Q would change from quarter to quarter or how Tesla inflated its gross margin, uh, things that seemed technical and dry, that they had to find out my identity. And I, I believe they shared it with Elon Musk and either that or he found out himself. So he found out who I was and he contacted my boss. Musk said, this guy, Fossey, that works for you, he's writing things about me. If he keeps it up, I'm going to sue him for defamation, and you guys are going to be dragged into this, and you're not going to like it. So I agreed I would stop writing at Seeking Alpha. I have. I would delete my Montana Skeptic Twitter account. It's gone. And uh, I'm a kind of a happy bystander now to the whole spectacle. A Tesla spokesperson later admitted they'd revealed Montana Skeptic's real name to the press, as well as the identity of his employer. Subsequently, he's become something of a martyr for the Tesla Q cause. As Montana Skeptic, I was just a nobody. Suddenly, with this guy doxing me, he turns me into an accidental celebrity. When asked online about Montana Skeptic, it was Musk's response which got media organizations to take notice. And so the people at Financial Times go, what the hell is this guy whose company lost a billion dollars last year and is losing a billion dollars this year, and he's going after some uh, inconsequential guy who writes blogs? But if Musk had hoped to silence his critics, his actions merely fired up Tesla Q. I started tracking his private jet at that point, and whenever I post about the movements of his private jet, uh, those posts are titled, Mr. Backfire Tracking Update. And that's because I feel that 
that the outing of Montana has backfired against him in ways he'll never even be able to fully comprehend. Being a short seller has historically invited the ire of many market participants. My general opinion on short sellers is pretty negative because I don't like people who bet against other people to be successful. They pretend like they're private investigators finding these frauds and, and you know, they're not. Okay, they're not doing any justice for society by any means. They're trying to make money. Gerber often accuses Tesla Q members of having ties to the fossil fuel industry. Others, meanwhile, see a broad conspiracy to bring Tesla down. We didn't end up, up here because a bunch of us sat in a room with Montana Skeptic and said, how are we going to bring this company down? Believe me, if short sellers had that capability, we wouldn't be bothering with Tesla. You know, we'd go after Google. We'd go after Jeff Bezos. This is small time. You know, I mean, if we had that kind of power. Short sellers have always brought a needed level of analysis and skepticism to the market in a U.S. market that has been characterized by booms and busts for the past, you know, as long as I've been alive. We really do perform a function that smooths out the excesses of the market. But, you know, it, it, it's like if, if your best friend, you know, is in love with a woman, is going to marry her, he doesn't want to hear that, you know, there's something wrong with her that, you know, hey, she was a, a high-priced call girl before, you know, you fell in love with her. He doesn't want to hear that. And that's the kind of the way it is with, with people who are long stocks. They don't want to hear their stock was a, was a hooker. But in the case of Tesla, the age-old battle between short sellers and bullish investors has become deeply personal. Ross Gerber? Oh, I think he's, I think he's silly. I think he, he's done no fundamental research whatsoever on Tesla. He, he contradicts himself all the time on Twitter. I thought for a long time that Ross Gerber's Twitter account was just a parody account, but people tell me that's really who he is. I don't know what to say. This Mark, uh, what's his name, uh, Spiegel guy, who's one of the most quoted short sellers, he barely has any money. I'm like, what? Why isn't there some rule that you can't really say crap if you don't actually manage real money? You know, and that's the joke of this whole thing. I'm the guy with $840 million on my computer buying and selling stocks for 5,000 people, okay? And these are guys sitting in their office with like $2 million of like grandma's money, you know, pretending that they're like real investors. It's safe to say none of this would have happened before the internet made it much easier for skeptics to be heard. Back in the 90s, this same community would be posting on Yahoo message boards, you know. It would not be as easy for them to all congregate under around podcasts and Twitter DMs and, you know, social media has made that for them. And for some, the 24-hour nature of the internet has led this obsession to take a personal toll. I loathe the thought of still having to tweet about this stock in six months <laughs> or a year. I just, but I can't let it go because I'm a deep obsessive. We have to be careful because they're one of the largest shareholders. While Tesla Q jumped on news that ARK Invest's Kathy Wood had drastically cut her exposure to Tesla in early 2019, she says it was a temporary move and doesn't change her long-term thinking. Tesla uh, is at least three years ahead of any other auto manufacturer and any other technology company. In the early days when Tesla said it was going to build a car on top of cell phone batteries, Auto manufacturers laughed at them, analysts laughed at them, and most technologists, engineers, thought that was impossible. They did it. According to the company, Tesla will also soon be the first foreign car manufacturer to have a wholly owned factory in China. Although, as usual, questions about being able to deliver on promises have arisen. As late as March of 2019, the site for the new plant remained a muddy field. It's supposed to be complete in May of this year. Tesla's kind of in the middle of the trade war. So China loves Tesla, so we're like, we'll give you, you'll be the first company we'll give a factory to, we'll fast track this. We're gonna say, look, we're letting an American car maker, you know, build cars for our market. See, we've opened up. So that's the good news for Tesla. They've got a, a, a site location, they've started construction, and in China you can build 24 hours and there's no labor loss. So they're gonna move very quickly, but what, Tesla China does for Tesla is bring the cost of production down substantially. There's speculation about Tesla shifting the majority of its production to China after years of receiving billions of dollars in subsidies from the US. 
another topic that has many Tesla Q members riled up. They are the beneficiary of endless subsidies. They are the beneficiary of mandates that tie their competitors down like Gulliver among the Lilliputians. And that is what I find offensive. It's a horrible misallocation of capital. There's so many different forces that have rolled into this story that are really interesting when you unpack it. You have green energy, you have tax incentives, you have a larger-than-life leader of this company, you have big cheerleaders at the big banks, and you have the world's most famous short sellers with this company square in its crosshairs. Ultimately, whichever side you pick will depend on many things. But number one on that list is your view of Elon Musk. I, I love you too. I love you too. The key element of the Tesla bull case and the Tesla bear case is the same thing. It's Elon Musk. Um, Elon Musk is willing to do anything to win is the bull case. And Elon Musk is willing to do anything to win is the bear case. The believers in Tesla say they're betting on the future. Our starting point is a five-year model. And we think that by the time five years comes around, this idea of Tesla is not just an auto company and it's not just a battery company. This is a software as a service company transforming transportation. The next decade, one of the greatest issues we face is climate change, whether people want to accept that or not. And Tesla is the only company that directly addresses the challenges of creating a solution. But many of us see Tesla as the symbol of a public willingness to ignore warning signs, both of the imminent demise of a high profile company and of a looming crash of much larger proportions, one tied to sky-high valuations and governments artificially pumping up the economy. Tesla is, is in some ways a poster child for what has been a whole bubble market. I mean, it's central bank money printing. But, you know, look, I'm, even if the central banks weren't printing money, I'm not sure that Tesla wouldn't be where it is anyway. I mean, it, it is a cult stock, as, as people say. And, but you know what happens with cult stocks? One day, or maybe not necessarily one day, over time, you know, the followers drift away. Tesla and its CEO embody everything about the world in the 21st century, from malinvestment and overvaluation to our obsession with Silicon Valley and celebrity culture. If Tesla does come crashing to Earth, as I firmly believe it will, its demise will ripple through every asset market on Earth. Can we get a little bit of if I'm wrong, it may signal that much of what we thought we knew about business is now obsolete. However, whether it ends well or badly, one thing's for certain. With the, uh, it won't end quietly. Thank you very much. Bye.